Okay, my loves. I know there are a lot of you that are out there that are really wondering how do I even set boundaries anymore. Maybe you didn't grow up with great boundaries. Maybe boundaries weren't really modeled well for you. Or maybe you were told that you cannot have boundaries. Maybe you're tired of being gaslighted in your relationships. And you're tired of feeling crazy all the time and guilty for trying to make a difference in your life. If this is you, then I want you to come schedule a call with me. Let's chat about the Unashamed Image Program. The Unashamed Image Program is geared towards you specifically. I am going to be helping you in our next upcoming session of the Unashamed Image. I am personally going to train you how to not feel crazy when someone is gaslighting you, how to be able to stand your ground, to keep your boundaries intact, and to also see through the bull crap. I am also going to be teaching you how to set really confident boundaries, boundaries that you can really rely on. And I'm going to help you communicate them in a way that really makes sense. Basically, I'm going to help you live a life free of shame, and on your terms. If you are ready and you are done feeling all the shame and guilt for trying to set boundaries, if you are not willing to live another moment the way you are right now and in somebody else's shadow, then this is the time to schedule that call with me It's completely free, no pressure, just love, just support. Go to www.erinandersonthetraumacoach.com. Scroll down the page to where it says, let's chat about working together. Click on that button and it'll take you to my booking page. If you're ready to live the unashamed life, schedule that call. Let's get you in the unashamed image program, my loves. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Welcome to the other side of the struggle. This is a podcast where we talk about trauma, how to heal it, and then how to take it and use it to unlock your mission and your potential and to use it to live your very best dream life. When you're dealing with betrayal trauma, it can be hard to know how to heal it, how to stop the pain, and to know what your next steps are to take in your own life. And these are the questions that we try to answer here. Trauma has the ability to rob us of our joy and identity, which is why it's so miserable to experience. But with the right tools and with the right mindset, We can totally reclaim that joy and even use this trauma to strengthen ourselves so that way trauma does not knock us off of our joy again. Living your dream life should be a non-negotiable, but trauma tends to try to negotiate that with you. And even though Trauma is not something that we will completely ever be free of in our life. The pain is negotiable. This is why I created Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching and this podcast is because I want my listeners, I want my clients to live, truly live free from the prison that trauma can put you in. I want you to live on the other side of the struggle. Okay, I want you to stop what you're doing right now for just a minute. And I really want you to hear me out. I want you to go right now to erinanderson.cartra.com forward slash page forward slash heart of gold. There you are going to find a free meditation just for you from me 
this meditation is amazing. Let me tell you a little bit about what it's going to give you, okay? Number one, it's going to help boost your confidence. If you are dealing with trauma, then you are most likely dealing with a confidence issue as well. And it's something that you are really, really wanting back. Number two, it is going to help you find security in your situations in your life because it's going to help you gain a sense of self-love and some self-trust. The third thing this is going to give you is an ability to escape the trauma that you're experiencing right now, this very minute, and help you find peace and joy and love and a deep appreciation for you and your experiences. This is going to really help you reconnect with yourself. So that is very, very, very important when you are dealing with healing from trauma. So again, I'm going to tell you what it what that website is that you need to go to erinanderson.cartra k a r t r a dot com slash page slash heart of gold capital h e a r t o f capital g o l d go check out this meditation Please claim it for yourself because it is 100% a gift from me to you to help you heal right now from trauma. All my love. Hey, my loves. Welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. Um, So this week we are chatting about how powerful your mind is and how does that actually transfer into how, how healing trauma comes about. But first, I really wanted to chat with you guys about a gift that I am giving out. I offer free calls to anyone that is dealing with betrayal trauma and would like some personal help with with that. Now, these are completely a gift, 100% free. There are no sales calls. I don't talk to you about my programs on these calls because I don't want to mix the energy of um, a sales call with a call that's a gift that's just a space for you to be vulnerable a space for you to really be able to share your heart and what's on your mind and get some really honest dialed in help. I do offer those. Um, So if that's something you guys are interested in, feel free to take a look at the link below and it'll say like a Calendly link. Click on that, schedule a meeting, And you and I will hop on a call and see what I can do for you within that 60 minutes. So give it a shot. And with that, let's dive into this week's content, which is the power of the mind. Now, um, if you guys have heard me speak or have been following me for a while, um, you might possibly be a client um, or even a previous client. You guys have possibly heard me talk about the five main creative energies that God has given us that have like no holds barred on them whatsoever. And your mind is actually one of those. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about all this month actually are your creative energies. Why is that important though? Well, the reason why is because if you've also heard me talk about what trauma does and and the way that trauma shows up in your life, one of the things it does is it causes you to kind of lose that creator inside of you. This is part of the reason why I hear a lot of women say, I just wish I knew who I was. I wish I could reconnect with who I was. I wish I could figure out 
what are my gifts, what are my talents, but I can't because we've got all of this trauma in my space, in my face, day after day. It's just there. So my response to that is, okay, well, let's take a look and see where your creative energies are. And the first one is your mind. Now, you guys know that I'm also a big advocate of God. That also means I very much believe in an adversary and the way that the adversary shows up in our lives and the way that he works. And I believe that one of the reasons why trauma is so damaging is because you've got this adversary making like not necessarily making you but but giving you every reason to focus all of your time all of your talents all of your energy in this problem because you want it solved so desperately that you can't focus on anything else or you find it really hard to i should say and so it literally like one of the first things he does is arrest and take control in a sense of your mind um, getting you to obsess almost over this problem. And that's not a judgment, by the way. Our brains are such, and the adversary knows this, that when we're met with a problem, we will do almost anything to solve it, and especially when that problem is creating some serious trauma in our lives. So what do we do? How do we take back our brain? Because here's the deal. Your brain can literally create anything. If I told you to envision a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater, you could do it. (laughs) You could conjure that up, whether it's a real thing or or a, a cartoon. It doesn't matter. You could do it. If I told you to envision yourself flying, you could do it. If I told you to envision envision yourself healing, that might be a little bit harder. But one of the reasons why the brain is is part of these creative energies is because the Lord knows that with more clarity the greater chance you have of being able to actually achieve your goal. So that takes getting pretty intentional with your brain and having some really good, honest conversations with your brain. And so one of the things you can start to do to take back power in your life from this trauma, like literally start get yourself back in the driver's seat of your life, is to number one, Start with having some daily conversations with yourself and asking yourself, what would it look like if trauma was not actually in my life? So your brain, yeah, well, let me back backtrack for just a second. You've probably heard what you focus on increases, right? Well, that's actually very much true. Whatever you focus on is it it increases. This is why when we focus on the trauma it or so desperately on the trauma. I'm not saying like don't focus on a solution. When we focus so desperately on the trauma, what ends up happening is it kind of becomes bigger. It, it seems to overtake us and it becomes a problem that is insurmountable and your brain just has a really hard time wrapping itself around something that seems so hopeless and large to be honest with you so we need to show ourselves what hope looks like what does healing look like we need to get details We need to get the details of what it is we're actually creating because your brain also really does not love walking into situations, especially a trauma brain, does not love walking into situations that it doesn't know it can trust. See, right now, 
it's focused on what it doesn't trust. It's focused on the things that 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 it's hurting you. It's focused on the things that scare you, the uns, the the feeling of insecurity, uh, the shaky ground. It is focused on all of that. And so it's going to need some sort of proof to show it that, hey, you can actually trust healing. You can actually trust peace. You can actually trust these good feelings. Now, that might seem a little silly to you because you're like, of course, these are all the things that I actually really want. But truthfully, the human brain is such that if you do not know what it looks like right now, you are going to have a really, really hard time creating it. So for an example, think about the way you have created things before. Okay. Um, Number one, you have to see some sort of um, what it is you want to create in your mind. Uh, take an artist, for example, or a musician, which I am actually both. <laughs> I love to draw. I love to sing. I love to create music. I love to create stories. I love to create all of these things. But my brain has to see it first. And if my brain doesn't see it, I hit a wall. It's the same thing with the drawing. Like, if... I am wanting to draw a horse or if I'm wanting to draw land, uh, some sort of landscape or uh, create anything that's artistic that way. um, I often will pull up a couple of pictures on Google and just take a look at them and then create something from that because my brain needs to see what it is I'm actually creating. And so I can actually see the details. Your brain needs details. And it needs details in a big way. So what do the details of your healing look like? This is actually where we start to get intentional. For me, it actually came down to knowing myself and how I really actually wanted to handle betrayal. What did it look like for me? and What did it feel like for me when betrayal came up in a way that made it so I didn't feel like my whole entire world was being ripped out from underneath me. What did I really want in my family? Who did I really want to be? What what kinds of things did I actually want to create in my life? But I think it really started like my healing journey and 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 getting my mind on board. I think it really started with understanding myself a little better. So I started doing this meditation called the Ideal Self Meditation. I started to show myself what it looked like or what I looked like healed. And I'll tell you something. It was really interesting. Because in this meditation, I... I go into this temple, and in this temple, I meet the next version of myself. And I get clear on what that person looks like, how they respond, what are some of their basic characteristics. And that's a big one right there, I would think, is is the basic characteristics. I actually remember very much the person I saw when I first started doing this ideal self meditation. For example, the person I saw was very poised. She was able to stay in control of herself in the face of chaos. She held her head high. She had a lot of confidence in herself and in her decisions. So how do you feel about boundaries? It's a legitimate question. A lot of people come to me really struggling with this concept. They often feel guilty for setting boundaries or they're not sure about even what a boundary is. You know, they've heard the term, set the boundary, 
things like that, but that's really confusing for them because it's not something that's well taught in our society nowadays, right? They know that boundaries are really important to having healthy, constructive, supportive, and wonderful relationships, but why? And oftentimes, they also know that they feel like their boundaries are being violated, but they can't quite pinpoint what the boundary is that's being violated. That's why I've created the Clarifying and Creating Your Boundaries free PDF. You can find out what your boundaries are, how to tune in to what the boundary needs to be, and how to effectively create and communicate your boundary so that way you stay in this place that respects you, respects the other person, but also gives you the confidence in your boundaries so that way you stop being gaslighted, disrespected, and unseen. It's having your boundaries really clear gives you a voice and also helps the other person stay in accountability with themselves. So that's not a role that you have to take on anymore. So if you are ready to really have clear boundaries, to really understand what your role is in the boundary, and to give yourself some safety and some protection against people that might try to gaslight you or are just being disrespectful, go grab my Creating and Clarifying Your Boundary PDF at AaronAndersonTheTraumaCoach.com. And while you're there, let's schedule a call with me. Come have a chat with me so that way I can really, really help you master this particular skill, creating boundaries, clarifying the boundary, communicating that boundary, and so that way I can also help you have relationships that show up to support you, cherish you, and love you. At that time, I didn't. I had like zero confidence in myself and zero confidence in my decisions because my brain was actually fighting against me, telling myself that all my decisions and all the things that I had done up to that point had blown up in my face. And the truth of the matter is every single one of my situations, every single one of the decisions I've made, all of the things, they actually led me to this point but that wasn't something I could see then but as I began watching myself in this ideal self meditation and and looking at my next self like what did my next higher self look like I began to realize a really big piece of the puzzle and that was she was grateful she didn't regret her decisions she didn't regret the things that she stood for she didn't regret any of the pain any of the decisions she'd made in the past she didn't regret anything because she very much valued the lessons that they gave her that led her to being who she was that day. And as I began to understand these characteristics of this next self, I started seeing an action plan for myself. See, that's one of the beautiful reasons why getting your brain on board is so powerful is because it starts to give you that action plan. It starts to give you your step-by-steps to healing trauma, to finding peace, to the U 2.0. Because the truth of the matter is, is you're never going to be who you were before the trauma. You can't go backwards. Because the person you were before the trauma doesn't know how to heal that trauma. But the person you get to be does. So it's not about looking backwards. It's about looking forwards. 
and getting your brain to understand and be on board with what that looks like. So how do you become grateful for something that seems so terrible? That's actually a really great question. <laughs> like really great question. And the answer to that is you realize the lessons that it's teaching you. See, it might seem crazy to say I'm grateful for debt or I'm grateful for the pain or I'm grateful for this trial that is in my life. But what if that trial never was a trial in the first place? You know, uh, Kelly King Anderson, well, she's actually Kelly King now. Kelly King and I talked about this, and you can go back and look in my um, podcast histories. If you haven't heard that uh, podcast yet, definitely go back and listen to it. Uh, because she and I talk about the idea that trauma and trials also have the ability to turn into miracles. And I would even go so far as to say that every trial I've ever had has always turned out to be a miracle if I'll just give it a chance. Not all miracles have been trials, but every trial has always been a miracle. That is true. And if we're willing to learn from it, some really, really powerful lessons, we can find boundary setting in there. We can find confidence. We can find a deeper love of self. That was something that my ideal self knew and understood was how much she loved herself. That was something that would never go away. And she could understand how she, how this trauma that was happening in her life actually helped her see some of her some of the things that needed fortified in her life like her self love her confidence her boundaries and all these other things your mind is the first step to healing actually you cannot heal it is I, I would really honestly argue that it's not possible to heal when all you can see is the hurt. When all you can focus on is the pain. To give you a little bit more in-depth on this concept here too, when I had ankle surgeries or when I was in labor giving birth to my children or any kind of anything that was really intense to go through physically. One of the first things they will tell you, like um, a good doctor or a midwife or uh, a, a birthing coach or um, any kind of a healing coach, they will tell you that when things feel overwhelming, one of the first things you need to do is just focus on your breathing. You, because it distracts you, it takes it takes the focus off of what hurts. The more you focus on the pain, the greater the pain becomes. And you can actually start to panic. You can start to get, uh, you can start to kind of lose control. And when we're in trauma, that's definitely where we feel like we're at. We're out of control. We We don't have the ability to control our life at this point. And that's actually one of the untruths that trauma teaches you. And so when we start taking back control, it literally takes us, again, like I said, getting really clear on what it is we do want and what we actually have control over. The second part to this is, you know, when I ask women, you know, what is it you actually do want in your life? They'll tell me, well, I want my husband to, to stop using pornography or I want 
uh, my children to stop treating me so de- so badly. I want, I want, I want. But the point of this is not to tell me what you want someone else to do, because the truth of the matter is, is you cannot fo- uh, force or make decisions for someone else. You can't force them to heal. You can't force them to make better decisions. You cannot control another person. You cannot take away their agency, no matter how it affects you. However, what you can do is get really, really clear and really, really detailed on your control and what is within your control. So if I was going to re-ask that question, a better version of it might be, what do you want to create in your life? What do you want your life to really look like? I want a husband that respects me. I want kids that respect me. I want to be able to set boundaries that are really, really powerful, that don't easily get broken. I want to be able to respond in truth and power, but yet also in love. When those boundaries do get broken, I want to command respect. I want to have confidence in myself. And I want to not be so connected to the decisions and the actions of other people. I want to feel confident about my body I want to feel confident about my thoughts and my feelings. I don't want to be ashamed of how I feel about the situation. I want to live unashamed. And isn't that interesting? You would think that, you know, um, the person that's dealing with the addiction that might be causing you trauma or the person that is dealing the trauma might feel be the, should be the one that should be feeling the shame, right? But it's often not. It's, it's, it's the person that is dealing with the trauma that often feels the shame, the shame of it all. I can't tell you how many women come to me and they say things like, I don't want people to know that my husband struggles with this because I don't want him feeling ashamed or betrayed or neglected or uh, or really honestly just uh, embarrassed or, or any any of the shame emotions and the reason why is because you know what that feels like you can actually understand what that looks like and what that feels like to a degree But the problem with that is it often causes you to carry the entire burden alone. And this is what women are struggling with. This is what the betrayed partner struggles with, is carrying the shame and the guilt alone. And this is why you want him to tell you the truth. This is why you want him to be honest with you, is so you don't have to bear that shame and guilt alone anymore. So that you actually can be equally yoked together. So one of the greatest things that I did for my mind in this situation was also show it what it looks like to be completely honest. If I wanted honesty, because remember, we're taking a look at what it is we actually want. If I wanted honesty, I had to give honesty. So where was I not being honest? And I realized I was holding back how I truly felt because I was worried about him spiraling and going into this deep, dark depression. And this woe was me because that was really uncomfortable for me. That was not a fun place for me to be in either is to listen to that because I had my own woes and struggles and my own pains that I was going through. But I also didn't want to sound uncaring and I didn't want to sound harsh and brash and sometimes truth can do that sometimes truth is really cutting but I had to learn that it was so important for me 
to also be completely honest with him and allow him to feel what he felt. Because me not allowing those things was actually me standing in the way of his progression, his lessons. I was actually taking the hit for his actions when I was not allowing him to feel all the feels that came along with his decisions and actions. It was important for me to be honest and let him know exactly how his gaslighting made me feel, how his pornography usage made me feel, and how it was going to continue to, in a sense, spiritually eat him from the inside out. So, for example, my husband, now let me just say this. My husband is one of the most fantastic men ever. He really, truly is. I love my husband with every fiber of my being. And just to really, really pinpoint this a little bit harder, he knows he knows with absolute clarity what I talk about on this podcast. He knows that I often talk about the struggle with his pornography addiction and everything that it did to me. He also knows that I talk very much about the healing from it and how much I needed to heal from it. He's 100% on board, and he's 100% okay with me sharing this. 100%. He's behind me on this because he knows how important it is for healing. And even though he's still working on healing his trauma, because actually that's what is at the root of his addiction, as well, believe it or not. It's at the root of almost every addiction. Even though he's still healing his trauma and the pains that he perceived, he can still be behind me and support me in this journey. But I'll tell you something. That never would have come out until I started being really, really dedicated to truth and allowing him to feel whatever it was he felt because I was honest with him. Because isn't it also what we really want from our husbands? We want them to come and tell us the truth, allow us to feel how we're going to feel about it, but then work with us on it. And when I realized that, that was also another piece of getting my brain clearer on what it is it really needed to create. I needed an environment that was full of truth. So if I needed that, that was something I had to give. And so I needed to get clear on what that would look like to give it. You know, one of the things Ruben did when he was dealing with his uh, pornography addiction is is there was a lot of body shaming uh, directed at me. And he would say things that were similar to, well, if your body looked more like that of what I, what it was I was looking at, um, I wouldn't feel the need to look at porn. If your body was more perfect, I wouldn't feel the need to look at porn. And... You know, that made it really convenient for him to shove the justification of his action onto me. But previously, I would take that on because I was trying to make myself responsible for his action. That was also something I could not see before because I was so focused on the problem. I could not see that I really truly believed down at my core that he could not control himself. He could not control his life. That was obvious. So I needed to be the one to do it. I needed to be the one to do the controlling. And so when he would throw things in my direction, I naturally would try to fix it. And so I would get really, really down on my body 
uh, get really, really frustrated that it didn't look a certain way. And I would actually take that on as truth because it was mind to control, right? Now, I know that doesn't make any sense to your conscious brain, but to my subconscious, that was what was there. And my brain was literally working against me because it was trying to take on the primary role of healing his problem so I could heal because I believed I could not heal until he healed at, at the very core of myself that's what I believed so imagine his shock when I realized that the truth of the matter was just that it had nothing to do with the way I looked because it wasn't about me it wasn't about the way I looked it wasn't about anything I did or said he had this addiction before he even knew me. So obviously it couldn't be about me. It wasn't that he was feeling deprived by me. It was that he was depriving himself. So imagine his resp his like shock when I looked at him and I said, well, you can believe that if you want to, but it's just going to get you in the same position you're in now. He was pretty darn shocked. And it also invited me to get really clear on my body and get a better relationship with my body, which is still actually ongoing to this day. I'm still learning how to heal my body, but to be honest with you, I don't think I would have even noticed that there was such a need if I was still focused on the emotional and mental and spiritual pain I was in. So, my loves, definitely get clear take time okay if you're going to heal from trauma that means you're going to have to get intentional about carving out time to do it i suggest you do it before anyone else gets up in the morning or some time where there's no one else around and you can be in a really quiet space because if you're constantly in chaos, you cannot hear the quiet voice of healing. It takes getting intentional. And if getting up before everyone is not an option, then get away from everyone on a daily basis. Because healing has to become a habit for your brain to pick up on the direction and the goal destination. It takes you getting really intentional, knowing what it is you want, and then to get your brain on board, it has to see what it is you really want to create. It has to see what it looks like to tell your husband the truth or whoever it is that's hurting you. It has to see what setting boundaries looks like. It has to see these things. And I'm going to be totally like honest with you today if you're still struggling with those things this is why you need to hire someone a coach or someone I would love to work with you personally but it needs to be someone who truly does understand what it's like to walk this journey find someone who gets it has been where you've been and has healed it because they are the people that truly do understand what you're going through and what it takes to get to where you want to go. That free call is still on the table. If you guys want that free call, hit me up. Seriously. Let's chat. I would love to support you. No sales calls. They are 100% dialed into you. So if you guys really want to get your brain to obey you and on board with healing trauma, let me know. Hit me up. There is a link in the descriptions of of my podcast and all the major uh, platforms um, where you can find a, a way to um, schedule a call with me. So please, please, please do that. My loves, you deserve to have your brain on board. You deserve to heal. And you deserve to be back in control and back in the driver's seat of your life. Next week, I have my fabulous friend, uh, Seidel Schultz, 
coming on to talk w- about the power of the voice with me and how the things you speak um, can actually get you clear on clearer on getting the things you want into your space. So it starts first with your brain, understanding what it is you truly do want and what it is you really want to create and seeing that pretty clearly. And then your voice gets on board. And we talk about how powerful your voice is in healing and bringing the things you want into your sphere. So stay tuned with me for that next episode. And in the meantime, I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye, all. Okay, so I've got a question for you. Have you joined my free Facebook group or Instagram page yet? If you haven't, go and do that. And this is the reason why. I always post my freebies, updated information, and all kinds of goodies for my community in that page. I'm also really active. I post videos. I answer questions. So if you guys really, really want to get in and interact with me, go like me on Facebook. Go join my group, The Other Side of the Struggle, Healing from Betrayal Trauma. Come find me on Instagram, Erin Anderson, Betrayal Trauma Coach. And come follow me because I always have something good there just for you, my audience. And I love connecting with you there. I also post any time that I have groups going on. I talk sometimes about my programs. So if you guys are interested in working with me or even just following me and getting as much free content as you possibly can, go hang out in my group. Go connect with the ladies that are there. Um, Also come and join Immune and Unashamed uh, for those married couples that are following me because in that group, me and my business partner, Kaisen Kid, are also talking and offering some great content in there. So go join up. I hope to see you on the other side of the struggle. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to